Hello, today we'll be going through practice questions 51 to 60 for the CompTIA Network Plus exam. Let's begin. A support agent receives a report that a remote user's wired devices are constantly disconnecting and have slow speeds. Upon inspection, the support agent sees that the user's coaxial modem has a signal power of negative 97 dB. Which of the following should the support agent recommend to troubleshoot the issue? The correct answer is A. Removing any splitters connected to the line. A signal power of negative 97 dB is extremely weak and can cause frequent disconnections and slow speeds. Coaxial splitters reduce signal strength, so removing any unnecessary splitters can help improve the signal quality and restore stable connectivity. Why the other options are incorrect? B. Switching the devices to wireless. Wireless connections are more prone to interference and may not resolve the issue. The root cause is a weak coaxial signal, not the connection type. C. Moving the devices closer to the modem. Wired devices are not affected by proximity to the modem. The issue is with signal strength, not the physical distance of the devices. D. Lowering the network speed. Reducing the speed may mask the issue temporarily, but does not address the root cause of the weak coaxial signal. Therefore, the correct answer is A. Removing any splitters connected to the line. Which of the following does OSPF use to communicate routing updates? The correct answer is C. Multicast. OSPF uses multicast addresses 224.0.0.5 for all OSPF routers, and 224.0.0.6 for designated routers to communicate routing updates efficiently. This allows OSPF routers to exchange information with only relevant neighbors instead of flooding the entire network. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Unicast. Unicast sends packets to a specific destination IP address. OSPF does not rely on Unicast for routing updates as that would be inefficient. B. Anycast. Anycast sends traffic to the nearest instance of a service or node, which is not used by OSPF for routing updates. D. Broadcast. Broadcast traffic is sent to all devices in a subnet, but OSPF uses multicast to avoid overwhelming, unnecessary devices with routing updates. Therefore, the correct answer is C. Multicast. A storage network requires reduced overhead and increased efficiency for the amount of data being sent. Which of the following should an engineer most likely configure to meet these requirements? The correct answer is B. Jumbo frames. Jumbo frames allow for larger Ethernet frames, reducing overhead and increasing efficiency by sending more data per packet. This is particularly beneficial for storage networks as it minimizes the number of packets needed to transfer large amounts of data, improving performance. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Link speed. Increasing link speed can improve performance but does not specifically reduce overhead or increase efficiency in the way that jumbo frames do. C. QoS. QoS prioritizes network traffic but does not reduce data overhead or improve efficiency. It is used for traffic shaping and ensuring bandwidth availability. D. 802.1Q tagging. 802.1Q VLAN tagging is used for segregating traffic into VLANs and does not directly impact the efficiency of data transmission in a storage network. Therefore, the correct answer is B. Jumbo frames. A security administrator is creating a new firewall object for a device with IP address 192.168.100.1-25. However, the firewall software only uses dotted decimal notation in configuration fields. Which of the following is the correct subnet mask to use? The correct answer is C. 255.255.255.128. A slash 25 subnet mask means that the first 25 bits are set to 1, which corresponds to 255.255.255.128 in dotted decimal notation. This subnet provides 128 IP addresses with 126 usable addresses. Why the other options are incorrect? A. 255.255.254.0 
This is a slash 23 subnet mask, which would allocate 512 IP addresses instead of the intended slash 25 subnet. B. 255.255.255.1 This is not a valid subnet mask because it does not follow the required contiguous bit pattern for subnet masks. D. 255.255.255.192 This represents a slash 26 subnet mask, which only provides 64 IP addresses instead of the required slash 25 range. Therefore, the correct answer is C. 255.255.255.128 Which of the following disaster recovery metrics describes the average length of time a piece of equipment can be expected to operate normally? The correct answer is D. MBTF Mean time between failures represents the average length of time a piece of equipment is expected to function properly before experiencing a failure. It is a key reliability metric used in disaster recovery and system maintenance planning. Why the other options are incorrect? A. RPO RPO defines the maximum acceptable amount of data loss in a disaster scenario, not the operational lifespan of equipment. B. RTO RTO specifies the maximum time allowed to restore a system or service after failure, not the expected operational time of a device. C. MTTR MTTR measures the average time required to fix a failed component and restore it to operational status, rather than its expected operating duration. Therefore, the correct answer is D. MBTF A network administrator logs onto a router and sees an interface with an IP address of 10.61.52.34 255.255.255.128 which of the following best describes how this interface IP address is being used? The correct answer is A. As a point-to-point -point connection A slash 30 subnet mask, also known as 255.255.255.252, allows for only four IP addresses, one for the network address, one for the broadcast address, and two usable IP addresses. This is commonly used in point-to-point -point connections between two networking devices, such as routers, because it minimizes wasted IP space while still allowing direct communication. Why the other options are incorrect? B. To connect to the internet. The 10.0.0.0-8 range is a private IP address space and cannot be routed directly on the internet. C. As a virtual address for redundancy. Virtual addresses are typically assigned in larger subnets, rather than slash 30, which is meant for direct connections. D. For out-of-band management. Out-of-band management typically uses dedicated IPs on separate management VLANs or networks, not a slash 30 subnet, which is designed for router-to-router -router links. Therefore, the correct answer is A. As a point-to-point -point connection. A network technician is troubleshooting a faulty NIC and tests the theory. Which of the following should the technician do next? The correct answer is B. Establish a plan of action. After testing the theory, the next step in the troubleshooting methodology is to establish a plan of action to resolve the issue. This involves determining the best course of action to fix the faulty NIC while considering potential impacts on the system. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Develop a theory. The theory has already been tested, so developing a theory at this stage would be redundant. C. Implement the solution. Before implementing a solution, a clear plan of action must be established to ensure proper execution and minimize risks. D. Document the findings. Documentation is the final step in the troubleshooting process, which occurs after the issue has been resolved. Therefore, the correct answer is B. Establish a plan of action. A network administrator is configuring access points for installation in a dense environment where coverage is often overlapping. Which of the following channel widths would the administrator choose to help minimize interference in the 2.4 GHz spectrum? The correct answer is B. 20 MHz In the 2.4 GHz spectrum, 20 MHz is the optimal channel width to minimize interference in a dense environment. The 2.4 GHz band only has three overlapping channels, 
1, 6, and 11 when using 20 MHz, which helps reduce co-channel and adjacent channel interference. Why the other options are incorrect? A. 11 MHz. There is no standard 11 MHz channel width in Wi-Fi specifications. C. 40 MHz. A 40 MHz channel width in 2.4 GHz causes channel overlap, leading to excessive interference, especially in dense environments. It also reduces available non-overlapping channels. D. 80 MHz. 80 MHz is not supported in the 2.4 GHz band. It is used in the 5 GHz and 6 GHz bands for high-speed data transmission. E. 160 MHz. 160 MHz channels are only available in the 5 GHz and 6 GHz bands, making them irrelevant for 2.4 GHz. Therefore, the correct answer is B. 20 MHz. A network manager wants to view network traffic for devices connected to a switch. A network engineer connects an appliance to a free port on the switch and needs to configure the switch port connected to the appliance. Which of the following is the best option for the engineer to enable? The correct answer is B. Port mirroring. Port mirroring allows a switch to copy network traffic from one or multiple ports to a designated monitoring port. This enables the network appliance to inspect network traffic without interfering with normal operations. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Trunking. Trunking is used to allow multiple VLANs to pass through a port but does not enable traffic monitoring. C. Full duplex. Full duplex improves network performance by allowing simultaneous send and receive operations, but it does not capture or mirror traffic. D. SNMP. SNMP is used for monitoring network devices and collecting performance data, but does not provide actual traffic capture or packet analysis. Therefore, the correct answer is B. Port mirroring. A network administrator is in the process of installing 35 PoE security cameras. After the administrator installed and tested the new cables, the administrator installed the cameras. However, a small number of the cameras do not work. Which of the following is the most likely reason? The correct answer is B. Power budget exceeded. Power over Ethernet switches have a maximum power budget, which limits the total wattage they can supply to connected devices. If too many PoE security cameras are drawing power from the switch, it can exceed the available power budget, causing some cameras to fail to power on. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Incorrect wiring standard. If the wiring standard were incorrect, all affected cameras would likely experience connectivity issues, not just a few. Also, PoE requires proper cable pinouts, but miswiring would prevent any connectivity rather than selectively affecting a few devices. C. Signal attenuation. Signal attenuation occurs when cable runs are too long, reducing network signal strength. However, it typically affects data transmission rather than power delivery, and the cameras would still power on but might have connectivity issues. D. Wrong voltage. PoE devices operate at standardized voltages. A wrong voltage issue would likely prevent all cameras from working rather than just a few. Therefore, the correct answer is B. Power budget exceeded. We have come to the end of today's video. Please make sure to like and subscribe and stay tuned for the next video. Goodbye.